And welcome in to the first edition of the BLK Show. I'm your host, BLK. Going to go solo today. Uh, sorry for the delay, everyone. It's been waiting in. Uh, instead of doing a long write-up, I figured I'd give everyone a new chance to listen in to a new show. Uh, we'll see how it goes. First episode of hopefully many. Uh, we will see how it goes. Today, we're going to be talking about the draft, obviously. I'm going to go over round by round. I'm going to give my thoughts on the picks, how the teams did. Uh, then we'll go over the rankings, uh, power rankings. I'll go over the rosters with everyone. And then I'm going to give my picks to win the cup. Now, I'm going to take the easy road out, and I'm going to give three picks, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, let's start off quick, real quick, with the draft. Uh, first round was power kill to lead off the draft. He won with Rondon Volante. It's a solid pick. My thoughts with this, it, if he could have moved back, probably the three or four, he probably could have still got his man. I think that maybe the first was a bit of a reach, but not really. He's a great player. He can play multiple roles as well, defense and center. Uh, Regretzky's was the second pick. He took Brick City. Not really a surprise. Brick was probably my, and I think the consensus, most likely first overall, just because of... His utility, basically, he can use defense, play uh, forward everywhere. Uh, C-Dub, a third to Anderson and SPDR. Interesting thing with this team, and we'll get there in a minute also when they with their next pick, but this team could arguably have the three best centers in the league, and I would definitely say the two best defensive centers in the league, without a doubt, with uh, Anderson and then their next pick that we'll get to. Now we get to Tricky. Now... I'm pretty sure most people have read Pales right up by now. And, you know, what can be said? I, I don't want to smash the guy. And Lucas is a great player. I mean, he's great. He, he really is. But Lucas is, in my opinion, and I think a lot of others, probably a third rounder. And, and some I've heard fourth, but I, I mean, maybe. But he's a third or fourth rounder. I, I'll give you that. Um, fourth overall. Um, I don't know what to say. Uh, good luck to Tricky and his team this year. I wish them the luck. Um, he set a record history note. I think this was said in Pals right up with one win in a season. Now he's going to have a lot of games to get more than one win. Uh, a lot more than when he set that record. 14 series to be exact. That record is in jeopardy, folks. I would set the over-under on this team's win with no moves, and this is without trades being done. And, and then looking at the roster and thinking, well, what trades could be done? They, I mean, unless they find an owner that's just looking out, you know, trying to make a wish, basically, in these times that are tough with the coronavirus and everything else, and just handing him players. There's not much he can do here. And we'll get to more of his picks later, but what more can you do? Lucas... At number four, DeMart goes fifth, picks a goalie. Goalie in the first round. Now, I'm not crazy about taking a goalie. Goalies are determined so much by the team in front of them. DeMart's arguably the best forward in the league um, with, I would say, Regretsky's and Cosmic um, right behind him. Cripps is the best goalie in the league, I would say. I... I there's another one that I think has a chance of shocking some people we'll get to later as well. But overall, just no doubt, Cripps is the best. So if you're going to reach and you're going to take a goalie in round one, why not? And having been on DMART's team before and having gone through the pain of seeing what a bad goalie can do to a really good team, the deflating goals, the goals where your goalie skates to the corner for no apparent fucking reason at all, and gives up an open net 2-on-1 when you have two defensemen and it's only 1-4. He just shoots the puck as he crosses the line. These type of goals, you know, getting wrapped four times in a game on obvious wraps. These things can be fucking deflating, let's be honest. And when things like that happen, that's why you draft a goalie in the first round if you're D-Mart. And he did, and he got the best in the game. So D-Mart and B-Crips, 1-2 combo right off the bat. Great start for D-Mart. Nick DeGreet, getting my boy and former owner of last year's team. Uh, surprise me. Uh, again, arguably the greatest single season in 239 history last year by surprise me. Uh, the best point per game total in the league history. So Nick DeGree grabs him. Um, Bartlett comes back with Peck 87. It's been a couple days now from the draft since the draft. I still have no 
goddamn idea who Pac-87 is. I, I really don't. Sorry, just don't. Uh, God bless him. Hope he's great. Hope Bartlett made a great pick. That pick could end up being as bad or nearly as bad as the Lucas at four, but time will tell. Uh, eight was the odd guy. He picked Dalai Lama. Lama, good player. A bit surprising with who was still on the board there, uh, which was the next pick in my opinion. But Lama, I'm not going to complain. Great player. Uh, Dom Silva and Rev Hellcat next. And this is Jelly. Jelly 35. This was the pick here at nine. Uh, I've heard other people say it. Anderson said it, I think, on the draft show. Um, I, I, Pal said it to me personally, and I think he also said it um, in his write-up. Jelly, in my opinion, was probably going to be a top six pick, top five, somewhere in that range. I, I figured he'd go around four, five, six, to be honest. Nine, a little bit of a fall. Falls right into the lap of Dom and Rev Hellcat. They don't mind that. Take him. Dom and Rev had the next pick as well at 10. Took c -Doo. Great combo there. Right on night now at 11 takes G.I. Joe Destro. For those not familiar with G.I. Joe, he plays a six foot seven to six foot nine defensive build, and he pretty much smashes everything in sight. And he doesn't miss a lot. He, normally, these type of defensemen that play that big are laughable, go in for huge hits, miss, occasionally hit, you laugh though, but normally you can just walk him. Uh uh, with G.I. Joe. He plays this as well. I'm. Not seen many people do it, but of the people I've seen try to imitate Zdeno Chara, this man does the best job of it. He's pretty good at bait breaking the puck out as well with the ridiculous build that I don't know how he fucking does it, to be perfectly honest. But he does it well, plays his role great. That's really not a bad pick. I know some people probably raised an eyebrow at it, but I, I really don't think it's that bad. It's pretty solid. Uh, Master Shotgun at 12 picks up Tamps. Bartlett, 13. My boy, young Kelch, nominated him for a Norris last year. And what Kelch doesn't understand, and Kelch always goes, oh, I suck, I suck. I understand, Kelch, you're not the best defenseman. I get that. You're, you're not. But you're not as bad one as you think. You're not as bad as you think. I think Kelch is one of those guys where occasionally he makes a mistake, and with a lot of defensemen like him, you know, that maybe aren't elite when they make a mistake, it's, it's catastrophic. It's really catastrophic, and, and he kind of holds himself to that, and he makes a few of those, let's be honest. But Kelch is such a locker room guy. For every downfall or thing that Kelch doesn't do right on the ice, he makes up for that tenfold off it and in the locker room and in the mic or on the party uh, on mic. Things like this, Kelch really, he deserves it. Um, he can say it's a reach. I think it's a great pick. Um, Kelch at 13 to Bartlett. 14, Anderson SBDR back up. And here we go with Young Buffalo 88. My boy, Young Buff. Young Buff. The, in my opinion, sulky winner last year. I don't give a fuck what everyone voted. That's This is my show. My show. I'll tell you who won. It's not what the awards say, but in my heart, Young Buff is your sulky. This guy is all about defense. Like, let me tell you. like He's not the greatest in the offensive zone. When I say that, I'm not saying he sucks. He does not fucking suck. He put up a lot of points last year. He does not suck. Does not suck. But if there is a strength and there is a non-strength, his strength is defense. He will shut down the opposing team center. Go look at the kids' AHL record this year. Go look at it last year with two different type of people. Look at the players he played with in the AHL last year when their contracts came up. They're all in the NHL on multi-year big money deals. If you look at the team he's playing with this year, he's playing with Monster J and some other guy. I don't even remember. I don't. I really don't fucking know. Some guy from Buffalo. It's Buff meets people from Buffalo and they fucking get on hockey and they play. That's what happens. I think he's like twelve two and something. Kid just wins. He just fucking wins. Uh, carrying the Utica Comets on his fucking back. Really like young Buff there. That's Anderson and Buff, the two best defensive centers in the game. Anderson, I believe, did win the Selkie last year on the record book. And not that he didn't deserve it, but he was part-time. Um, but, yeah, so the two best centers right there. And then they have C-Dub, who can slide into center as well, I believe. And uh, I don't know if I'm letting the cat out of the bag if I am. Oops, sorry. But I believe, so having talked to Anderson, the plan for them is to play um, – C dub at defense, his natural position at left D. So you're going to see C dub at left D, Buff at center. On odd games, I believe Anderson will play center and SBDR will probably be on the wing 
with uh, Buff. Buff and Espidar, also Buffalo Boys. They know each other. I think that's uh, if I'm letting the cat out of the bag. And I might be wrong. Maybe they'll switch it up, but that's what I was told. Uh, so there you go. 15, Monster J, Ezreal, Saner, West Coaster, J, let's say. J before the draft, kind of got fleeced a little bit. But here's the thing with J. Did he help Pal out with the trade? Yep. Did he help Anderson SBDR out with his trade? Yep. But at the end of the day, Jay got pretty much everything he wanted. It, it wasn't like Jay fucked up and missed out on guys. Because you know what? If Jay had the third overall pick, he was the only player on his team that wasn't there. He's probably been Young Couch. That was his plan. He was going to take Young Couch at three. Or maybe G.I. Joe Destro. He just wanted to get his two defensemen. Other than that, every other player on his team was who he wanted. So it broke down the way it was going to break down. Good for Jay. He's going to West Coast, people. I think everyone wants to laugh at Jay, but if he gets two out of three on the home host, good fucking luck when you're playing him on his goddamn Guan, Guam ping. This kid lives, like, closer to Alaska than he does Washington. The son of a bitch is on Vancouver Island. He isn't on Vancouver. He's on Vancouver fucking Island. He is so far away. I just don't get, like, he's close to fucking Russia, man. Like, this kid, he's playing on oceanic fucking servers, practically. So when he gets his fucking host... Good fucking luck, the guys on the East Coast. It's going to be 120 ping and upwards, and people are going to bitch. They're going to be upset, and he's going to laugh his way to fucking a lot of goals at your expense when you cannot move. Book it. Cosmic, BTW. 18, or, oh, I'm sorry, jumped ahead there. Oops. Pal Poner, my own team. Of course, I'd want to skip him, right? 16th, Pal Poner, Seji. My boy, eSports teammate, left wing, solid. Seji. When he works in Iowa, his ping's a little tricky. It's eh. He's still solid. And I think in a league like this, he's still going to fucking tear it up because he still does pretty goddamn good in eSports, even at 110 ping, 120 ping, at the best 90 in Iowa. Um, you know, he travels for work. So when he's in Iowa, maybe won't be the best connection. However, when he's at home in uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, Philly, fan you know fuck the eagles right but anyway philly uh his connection's a lot better and he's a beast probably in my opinion that is the sleeper when everyone thinks of the big three as i mentioned earlier forwards said you might be the best forward in the league people will find out this year i think uh that's a steal at 16 even as a part-timer even as a part-timer that's a steal to me uh jay came back at 17 got his goalie from last year sniper can't hate that good pick uh, Cosmic back again. Here we go. This is finally, sorry I jumped ahead before, but here's Cosmic's pick of Crispy8120. Crispy plays for recognition this year in esports. Um, he went 3 4 and 1. He had 12 points. Um, he has experience playing um, with BTW in esports, so that's, that's a solid pick there for them. LG player. Um, good player. Very good player. So that's a solid pick for them. I'm surprised he slipped that far, but. I guess not a lot of people knew him or did their research. Uh, then at 19, we have Master Shotgun with Marty McFly. At 20, Pal Poner. The Norris runner-up uh, to yours truly, uh, K-Dog, MK2, at 20 to Pal Poner. Solid pick there. Uh, surprised to see a full-time defenseman slip that far, especially no offense, no offense for some of the D-men that are already off the board. That guy to go there, that's surprising. Um then Dangles HD went to Hollywood. Hollywood again went Yakov. Uh, the odd guy with Flowed. Cosmic came back with Hall of Fame. Master Shotgun with Martin Nuke. Sorry if I'm butchering any of these fucking names. Sorry. Dmart had uh, Cortez EA. Solid pick there, by the way. I like Cortez a lot. I think Dmart, we'll talk about it. I think Dmart did very well for himself in this draft. 27. Hmm. Tricky HG again with Colinelli. I like Colinelli. I played Moose like two seasons, um, maybe three. I don't know. It was it was I. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to diss Moose, but it is what it is, right? Um, Colinelli was an owner. Great guy. Great guy. He's not shitter. He's not a shitter. He's all right. Um, second round, eh, eh, you know, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. You know my feelings already with Tricky's team, so I'll leave it at that. I'll let my feelings be known later as well. Palponer, my owner, 28. Zombie, 
XSP. I didn't know Zombie. I played a couple games with him. Seems like a solid fucking player. I like him. Gets a puck on that. Not too bad. Um, this is where, though, this is weird. Because when he took Zombie, this is I thought Pale was taking Figo. I just always think they're linked for whatever reason. Like So I thought that's where he was going to go when I was watching the draft live. He didn't. Next pick, Regretsky's 29, Notorious Figo. Solid pick. Figo, I like Figo. So Figo isn't like a game breaker, but he just goes to a spot and... He's always open, and Figo's mine. I'll let you know. Like, it doesn't matter who the fuck you are. Figo's going to be like, I'm open, I'm open. Like, I remember I had to go to the tape on this guy fucking, like, four times. I'm like, yo, Figo, like, let's let's run the fucking tape back. I got wasted a pause one time. I had a pause. I'm like, go to replay, and I'm like, now, look, you tell me. Like, yeah, you're fucking open, but there's fucking, like, five people between you and the fucking puck. So are you open? Like, you're in fucking left field by yourself, but I can't get the fucking puck to you. But that's neither here nor there. Like I said, I like Figo does his thing, get him the puck, some bitch can rip it, and he does have some, like, slippery moves, one-on-one, he's not the easiest guy to stop, like, as a defenseman, it's like, I don't, like, play Figo and go, yay, it's Figo, like, I'm like, all right, whatever, like, you know, is what it is, so Figo's good, um, at 29, it's a great pick, so Figo at 29, uh, power kill at 30 gets Anthrax X81, honestly, and I hate to say this, but I'm not really familiar with him, a lot of people are, I've heard, like, good things, like, I've heard good things. I just, I'm not familiar. Um, Raw B, number 3234, went to power kill at 31. I don't know who the fuck that guy is. I just don't. I'm sorry. I just don't. Maybe he's great. Maybe he's, maybe he's better than me. I just don't know who the fuck it is. Sorry. Uh, Regretsky is 32. Ozzy. Great pick. Ozzy's solid. Ozzy with his fucking spinorama pass and shit like that. I mean, it's great. It's fantastic. I like Ozzy. Like, I think Ozzy's a good player. I think Ozzy in the third round, was it? I need, re I need glasses so bad. I refuse to wear glasses. Long Quick little story. Story time with Blue, well, Blue Line. So I used to be a dealer. As Knife in Your Guts knows. What's up, Knife? What's up? Uh, former dealer as well at Marin Live uh, Casino. Dealer. And I wore glasses. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to wear glasses. I couldn't see a shit. So I went, got glasses. Went to work. First day on the job. Someone's like, you look like a nerd. I'm like, yank, off they went, haven't worn them yet, fuck it, I'll like crash a car and just not be able to read, I don't care, as long as I look good, right, anyway, back to the draft, uh, we got Ozzy here, great pick, uh, next, yeah, and it was the third round, it was, the, so it's a great pick in the third round, Croydon Knight, next up, with Wingles, DGC, Wingles, good player, Wingles is great with media, by the way, shout out to Wingles with the media, um, very good at write-ups. I hope Croydon lets Wingles do write-ups. Um, does a lot of uh, shit in LG. Does um, a draft preview, and he did a video series on YouTube for the Caps Gaming Tournament for eSports. Really cool. Uh, Pale, Kelch, whoever the fuck else is an admin. I think Yambag. What's up, Yam? Um, all you guys should get in touch with this kid. Get in touch with this kid. Make friends with this guy. He can do a lot for media. He can do a lot on YouTube. Good dude as well. Plays on my team, GM and Raj, or GM for Buffalo and uh, LG. He plays on my LG team in Rochester. Good cat. Definitely want to talk to that guy. Admins. Get him on your side. Good player too. 34. Back to Tricky with EWTU Eric. Again, no fucking idea who this guy is. Like, couldn't pick him out of a lineup or crowd of two people. Just don't know who he is. Sorry. Um, but according to Colinelli and his reply to Pals, just fucking burning down of that. I mean, just literally like talking about like lighting a house on fire. Like Pal poured gas all over that team and just threw a match on that son bitch with that right up power ranking. But Colinelli's retort, which I liked, by the way, way to show pride in your team and say, I'm going to shove it up your ass. Got to love that attitude. His retort was, EWTU is elite. He's great. He's going to show us. Well, hopefully he does show us because hopefully that means that he's a first-round talent. And then you just flip it out and go, hey, you picked the guy in the first round that should have been in the third. You picked the guy in the third, should have been in the first. Presto change. Oh, Tricky's team isn't looking so bad no more. So maybe. DMART up next, 35. Wizzy War. Wizzy. I do believe, I, I don't know this, I think so. Let me check, God, I have this here. I believe he is a part-timer, which is 
True. He is part time. Okay, and he signed up for all positions. I didn't know if he uh, had signed up for only forward. I thought originally he had only signed up for forward, but it looks as if he went to D as well. So there you go. I mean, one of the best D men, if not the best D man in the league right there, part timer or not, like playing with D Mart and B Crips. Are you kidding? They're boys. It just works out. You know, D Mart's done a great, great job. Cortez as well. Another just a link it's like clicks you can literally follow drafts if you know who plays with who it kind of always like there's always some outliers of course but overall it always kind of like you know you can put the pieces together anyway uh, after wizzy we had nick the greek who picked up barrett 50 cal another one of my boys barrett another buffalo guy um which is where i'm not from buffalo but it seems like all my friends are uh, another buffalo guy barrett good player plays the most aggressive center style I've ever seen in my life. It works for him. We've had talks. We've had arguments. I mean, shit, we've yelled at each other. Like, I don't really care for a real offensive center that doesn't really give two fucks about the defensive zone. That's Barrett, almost. I mean, he cares a little bit of the defensive, defensive zone. He will come back and defend a bit, but overall... He's all offense, but he puts up a ton of points. So sometimes, you know, you can win a fucking 6-5 game with Barrett because he's going to score a lot of goals. So Nick the Greek's team looking solid right off the bat. I mean, he's going to have a lot of goal scoring with Nick. Surprise me and Barrett. Like, Jesus Christ, they're going to score a lot of goals. Um, after Barrett, we had Cosmic and BTW taking Wes. Number 3163. Now, I've looked this guy up on... LG can't find him. I don't know who he is. I have no idea who he is. Now it's a new gamer tag because of the three one six three. It's the tag. That's what they do now. If you get a new gamer tag for anyone that knows, they give you this fucking hashtag bullshit. So I don't know who Wes is. If it is a second tag, the only thing that matches up is BTW has a history playing with the guy on Toronto um, in LG named Wesley Snipes. Um, or crispy anyway crispy does so that's what i would think that that's where that connection would be if it is him good luck boys that team's fucking loaded if it is i i'm not choosing them i'm not saying that i don't know who it is i'm just saying that's the only thing that would kind of make sense it probably isn't it probably isn't i doubt that but if it is good fucking luck league that team's going to be stacked odd guy 38th overall third round the lime great goalie 39th, SBDR, and Anderson, superstar. Now, earlier I said Cripps was the best goalie overall, but there was another goalie in this draft that could surprise people. This is that guy. I, If I remember this guy right, he was the quote-unquote B Cripps of Moose. Like, when I played those two, three seasons of Moose, this was that guy. This was the guy that was the one or two goalies in the league that just didn't suck dick. Like, he was one or two that just was great. Like, that was the man. So, I believe he could be truly a superstar if that is the guy that I think it is in that. Um, Hollywood came back with the 40th pick, D Derek NGR, or GNR, sorry, Derek GNR. Um, Croydon Knight bat followed that with B, tap 555566. Croydon Knight with Sauce Walker X6. Uh, Cosmic BTW after that with 43, picked the N75 goalie. Um, I don't know if he's playing goalie in this league, but he's a goalie in LG. He plays like in the CHL. Solid guy, I think. I'm look at his stats. Uh, Yin 75. He is 131, 18, and 8 in the C, uh, 12, 6, and 2 in the N, and 17, 31, and 8 in the AHL. So a guy with a lot of experience. Don't expect this guy to fucking suck. Cosmic and BTW would not draft a guy that fucking sucks. This guy's probably pretty solid. Um, knows what he's doing. Probably perfect for a league like uh, 239. Probably a good dude that's going to come in and be a lot better than people expect that they got in the third round that late. Monster J, 44th overall. Got Yeah, don't know. I think one of the few guys that isn't a West Coaster on his team. So good luck, Dunn. Good fucking luck. Uh, Nick DeGreek. Epic. I like Epic. Epic's a great defenseman. Epic at 45. Great pick. That's That solidifies Nick's team really well, actually, with their running gun offense. Um, Epic's a good uh, backbone there on the D core. Uh, all right, let's go up here with round four now. We're into round four. The 46 pick, Nick the Greek again. Drug Monkey, playing goalie. Hey, great. Um, that's 
wonderful. I'm pretty sure. I think it's where he's playing. That's what I was told anyway. Cool. Hope he's great. Uh, Hollywood at 47. Frosty Nightmare. Frosty's a good little player. I like Frosty. Solid pick in the fourth round. Uh, Bartlett, 48th, got Busy. Uh, 49th was Could I Not. Donnie Wood, 50th. Pal Poner picked up yours truly. Blue Line King, 7, who fell. Boy, did I fall. Part-time or not, like, I fell. Like, looking and now reading some of these names, I did this the other night, and I'm just quite fucking, like, I'm upset. You've offended me, boys. You've offended me. But it'll be okay. I'll get over it. No problem. 51, Dom Silva and Rev Hellcat. Swizzy, my boy Swizzy, Forrest the Swizzy, Forrest the Swizzy, kid scores a lot of goals, he's really improved, really, really improved, he's getting better day by day, he's playing the game a lot more, um, Swizzy had a baby and did not play the game for a bit there, um, the baby's now like eight months old, something along this, maybe almost a year, actually, time fucking flies, I don't think it's a year just yet, I think it's like eight, nine months, um, so things are like, if anyone's had a kid, you know how it goes around that time, it gets a little bit easier, so uh, he's played a lot more, and he's really doing well, having a really good year in the CHL of the LG. Um, great player. Another great pickup for Dom and Hellcat. I mean, it's a consistent theme. You're going to see, if you're listening, the power rankings, and it matches up. Consistent theme, pick after pick. These teams are just nailing it. Um, Rev and Dom again with Rocco, 33. I don't know him personally. Heard nothing but solid and good things about him. Heard he's a really good player. So, again, Dom and Rev nailing it. Uh, odd guy with Dr. Dangles. Uh, Bartlett with Hope Cholo. Good goalie. Great goalie. He's really good. Um, I know him. He's he's really, really good. That's a solid pick by Bartlett. Uh, Master Shogun, or Shotgun, sorry. Bobby Banner. D-Mark gets sober enough. Tricky comes back with, hi, my name is Ed. Hi, my name is Ed is a good player. Solid, solid player. Getting better every year. Getting better every year as a pale nailed in his write-up. He's, he's a solid player. Good fucking luck with that team, though. Good luck. Hollywood, Clancy, uh, 2113. Regretsky's followed up with Link Runner. There's Regretsky's goalie, and that's just uh, it's a tough team to beat, man, as you start looking at that roster already. He's done a really good job. Uh, Power Kill followed up with back to back picks at 60 and 61. He picked Dugan X95 with, uh, and then Death 2A LL315. Uh, no regrets. He's up again. Picked Magilla, 72. What's up, Magilla? Good job. Getting picked there in the fifth round. Um, Monster J, uh, fifth round pick, 63. Spoonman Fork, one of Jay's boys. Another one of these motherfuckers that lives, like, goddamn in, like, Alaska. Another one that's going to frustrate me. Like, I'm already requesting right now, officially, that I do not play Jay's team when it is that series. Uh, Pale, um... If it's in one of the first four weeks or whatever, um, or three weeks, and I'm not available on Thursday, and it's a Thursday or not a Thursday series, please reschedule so when it does get to that time, I can not play that series. Thank you. I do not want to play that. I, I've experienced it, folks. It's it's hell. It's hell. It's legitimately. It's fucked me up. I'm still seeing ghosts. Uh, Tricky, follow Jay at 64. Hockey Mike, 2344. Four. DMART after that with Swag, 92. Solid pick. Master Shotgun with Necky, 2218. Formerly Nexus, 510. Bartlett with Fresh, 4 Days. Uh, He's a CHL guy um, and LG. Solid player. Um, the Odd Guy with Siv C. Poe, 117. Anderson Espidar followed up with my boy Guiney. Gyne is a legit gynecologist. He's a doctor. Uh, for those who don't know, legit, legit, like, kind of world-renowned gynecologist. Like, he's, uh, he runs a school in Fresno. He's, they sort of say he's a big deal. Um, ask him for a photo of his Porsche, by the way. It's fucking sweet. Uh, good dude, also. Great fucking dude. Solid player. Glad Anderson then picked him up. They're going to take really good care of him. And he's going to take care of them. Good fucking player. Good teammate. Up next, Dom Silver, Rev Hellcat, Prophets of Rage, another guy I know. Good goalie, good goalie. Um, Pal Poner, up next with Brick Wald, our goalie. I liked what I saw so far. Only got to see him in one game. He looked good. Um, Nick DeGreek, next with Butcher's Son at 72. Cosmic, EA, and BTW went with Penn's 58 fan next. Monster J then picked Echo, Cosmic 8. I think another West Coaster, of course. 
Anderson came back uh, with the Clumsy Ninja. And then to lead off the sixth round, we had Pal Punter taking Barzell, 13. Mr. Anderson with Agent X007. Cosmic and BTW taking my boy Knife in Your Guts. What's up, bro? Was right down the road from me. Literally lived like two minutes away from this guy. Uh, Nick the Greek uh, picked Newfie Bruins afterwards. Croy Don Knight took Duff McGriff. Dom Silver, Rev Hellcat, Phoenix Rising. Hollywood took Stoey Jopa. Odd Guy took Younger, 97 at 83. 84 was Bartlett. Johnny Blaze. Master Shotgun took Sir Puffington, 420. Demart took Novocaine, 13. Tricky took Wolfmaster. Monster J took Blue Liner X6. I believe he runs Moose. Good dude in my dealings with him. Nice guy. Regretsky's Legion. Power Kill took Finney. That's a, I think. What's the deal with Finney? I'm surprised he fell that far. Finney's a solid player. I don't know what the fucking deal is with that, but that's a good pick by Power Kill that late. I didn't know he was that late. Um, just glancing over this before the show started, I didn't pick that up. The seventh round, most teams deferred. Uh, for instance, Regretsky's tricky. I don't know what the fuck he deferred. He didn't know all the help he could get. Bartlett deferred. Uh, Hollywood, Dom Rev deferred. Nick Degree, Cosmic, Anderson all deferred. Teams did take picks. Power Kill took BC Renton. Jay took Cesar. I'm not going to say this name. I have CSER. I'm not, whatever. Um, some West Coast fuck that's going to make my life miserable. Demart took the Tomahawk. That's a great pick in the seventh round, by the way. Tommy's a, not a bad player. He really isn't. He tries hard, too. Master Shotgun took uh, Flaming Dwagon. Um, <laughs> cool name. I actually, I really like that name. I hope that guy's good because his name is. Uh, not, Nabucho Donosaur, uh, the odd guy. Now, I don't know. have no clue on this dude. However, Anderson told me that he hurt. That this guy's pretty solid, so keep an eye out on him, everyone. Uh, Croydon Knight took Zombie Dangles, and my owner finalized the draft with the last pick of it at 105, Mr. Irrelevant, Headless Frangu. Not relevant to me, though, because you're on my team. That was your draft, pick by fucking pick. Whew, that's exhausting. That's a lot of picks, like 105 picks. Like, Jesus Christ. It's a lot, folks. Yeah. All right. So there's that. So now that we have that, we're going to basically go over uh, the rosters real quick a bit. Um, I'm just going to quickly look at some teams that stand out um, overall, and then I'm going to get right into the power rankings here. Um, Regretsky's team, when you look at a team like Regretsky's, he drafted Brick City, Figo, Ozzy, Link Runner, Megilla, and Legion. Uh, the idea, I guess, here is Regretsky's will play center. Figo and Ozzy will play the wings. Brick will play D. Uh, Legion and Megillo will compete for the other D spot and who won't kill themselves from Brick yelling at them. And Link Runner will be between the pipes. So when Megillo or Legion fuck up, Megillo, or I'm sorry, Link Runner will hopefully bail them out. That seems to be the plan there, and that is a good plan because when you have four guys, really five, on the ice that you can pretty much absolutely depend on in any league, but especially a league like this where it's not a 32-team, you know, three-line deep type of league. It's just a one-line. It's, it's as good as you can hope for. That's that's as good as you can hope for. If somehow Regretskis can work his magic and turn Megillah and a Legion or one of those two into another defenseman, even if he has to downgrade, and I'm not... I'm not saying trade Link Runner. He's a great goalie. But if he downgraded goalie slightly, with goalie being a little bit more stacked this year, you would say, he wouldn't have to downgrade that far. If he could pick up another defense, I mean, it's fucking over. It's over. It's over. It wouldn't matter if they just pulled the goalie at that point and played with an empty net. They had those five on the ice. Most nights, they're not going to have to worry about it. There's a few teams that would compete, but not many. Um that's, that's just a fact. So that team really stood out to me. Um, I want to give a shout-out to Nick the Greek's team. Nick, last-minute decision to own uh, from what I heard. And what a good job he did. Um, regardless of how much help he got from others or Wizzy really, you know, give him, giving him his ear and shit. You know, good on him, by the way. Um, good on everyone for Impale and everyone that – Anderson, everyone that helped Nick and, um, you know, and helped every new owner. Helped Jay. I know there was a lot of guys um, – don't get the credit and people just don't know about because guys don't go around bragging but even when i was an owner the first time I, and only time i owned 
Pale shared his power rankings with me. And even though there were some guys I was like, oh, I don't know, guys I knew that was like, I wouldn't put them that high. Like, I fucking appreciated the shit out of that because I really didn't know a lot of guys. And he could have been like, fuck him. You know, good. I hope he doesn't know anyone. I hope he fails and my team gets better. But he didn't do that. He didn't. He looked out for me and he looked out for the league and he does that year after year. And I know Anderson did that with Jay, and I know he did that with others, and I know Wizzy helped out a couple guys, and I just think it's fucking great. So give those guys a pat on the back or a round of applause for that shit. Um, good on them. Uh, Nick, though, no disrespect either to Nick, because he also, at the end of the day, he had to pull the trigger. He had to make up his mind. He had to make that pick, and Nick did a great fucking job. Nick got surprised me and Barrett. To me, that's one of the more scary offenses out there. I mean, that's really, really good. Um, then they have Epic back there on D. Um, after that, you know, because Drug, I don't believe, is uh, D eligible. I think he's going to be playing goalie from what I've heard. After that, I'm not so sure about Nufi Bruins or Butcher's Son, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. It's definitely going to be a high-powered offense. It's, it's going to be a high-powered offense, and we'll have Epic back there to help out defensively, so that will not be a bad thing. Um, what other team did I want to? Oh, D Mart, D Mart, solid team. B Crips, Cortez, Wizzy, Sober, Swag, Novocaine, Tomahawk. I really like that team. That team is deep. That team may not be as top heavy as every team, but just from top to fucking bottom, like just those guys are consistently good, and that is going to be a team to watch out for. They will not suck. I guarantee that. And D Mart, love D Mart. I know he owned me one season, didn't go too well. He may not love me, but I love him. He's a great guy, no homo, by the way. Uh, great dude. He's a great dude. Really awesome. I'll play nets for him anytime, by the way. I need a goalie. Got me. <laughs> uh, Dom Silva, Rev Hellcat, another team before I get into the power rankings. That jumps off to the uh, page to me. They have Dom and Hellcat right off the bat. Good start. Good start with the uh, dual captains. But then you have Jelly. Sea-Doo, Swizzy, Rocco, Phoenix Rising, and Prophets of Rage. Um, the only weak spot I really see on that team is possibly in that. And that, and I love Prophets. Prophets is my boy. I, I think Prophets is really good. Um, I just think that with other goalies in the league and what the levels are to this shit, like, that's their weakest spot. No disrespect to anyone, but that is their weakest spot, is a net, in my opinion. And if Profits holds up his end of the bargain and can play like he truly can, and if he's on, he doesn't suck. So it all comes down to that. Um, so, yeah. But let's get into the power rankings here. Not to take up much more time. We've been on for yeah, 40 minutes. Not too bad, I guess. Making pretty good time. Pretty good time. Uh, power rankings. So... I've already touched on some teams that I like, so obviously you're not going to see them at the bottom. And I think everyone knows who's at the bottom. Um, we're going to go with Tricky HD, my number 15 ranked on the power rankings. Uh, Tricky's team is Tricky, Lucas24, Colinelli, EWTU Eric, Hi, my name is Ed, Hockey Mike2344, and Wolfmaster00. I mean, I, I just named I just named three teams a minute ago, maybe four, of rosters that just stuck out to me. And there's others. I mean, I didn't mention Cosmic's team. I didn't mention my own team at Pell. I didn't mention Croydon's team. I, I didn't mention any of those. I just mentioned three or four that just popped off the page to me. And then I just read you that lineup that I'll read you one more time. Tricky, Lucas, Colinelli, EWTU Eric, Hi, my name is Ed, Hockey Mike, 2344, and Wolfmaster00. Yeah. Yeah. So, when you compare, there is no comparison. Now, I hope this team surprises me. I hope these guys really do. I hope they say, fuck you, Blue Line. Watch. And I hope they just... Kick the shit out of people. I really do. That would be the funniest thing to me in the world. And I'd be great. I, 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 I'd be great with it. I'd have no problem being that guy that goes, well, you know, fuck it. 
Look at that. They shoved it up our ass. Good for them. But I don't see it. I'll be fucking shocked. I'll be shocked if they win a series. I'll be shocked if they win a series. But there's only one team that they have a chance of beating. If they win a game, mark my words, in my opinion, the team they have to beat would be Master Shotgun, who is number 14. Not trying to harp on Tricky anymore at 15. We get the point. Dumpster Fire, 14, Shotgun. Shotgun's team is Master Shotgun, Tamps, Marty McFly, Martin Nuke, Bobby Banner, Necky2218, Sir Puffington420, and Flaming Dragon. Now, outside of hearing a few good things about Flaming Dragon and knowing that Tamps is a solid player, and Shotgun's RA2, I just don't see all that. I, and Marty's RA2 as well. Marty's not bad at well as either. But the thing is, is looking at the other talent, this is a deeper year. This isn't last year when there was fucking eight teams or nine teams. This isn't the year before where it's eight or nine teams. It's 15 teams. It's 15 teams. And it isn't like the school for the fucking blind let their kids sign up. Like good players signed up. Good players came back. These are good players. It's tougher. It's going to be tougher. So a guy like Marty, who in my opinion in the last two years probably was like maybe a second round pick. I don't know if he was the second, and I don't know if he went in the second round this year, but I should. It was. I just read out the fucking draft. You remember. I told you. I don't. Short-term memory loss. Side effects of smoking. But I don't believe he is a top-flight player at this time. He's a good player. Good player. But top-flight, I'm not sure. And I look at that roster, and I'm like, they don't have a top flight player. They do, where? Where is it at? Where is it at? I, I don't see it. I just don't. Prove me wrong. I hope they do. I hope they do. 13. I hate to do this to my boy couch. I hate to do it, but your team, Bartlett's team. And this, I'd like to put a question mark here. I, I think there should be an asterisk at least. I went off the hook if... If I'm completely wrong on this team, I, I went off the hook because I'm, I'm putting an asterisk on it right now. I'm literally turning in my get out of free jail card right this second, so no one can hold me to this. But I'm putting Bartlett at 13. Here's why. Outside of Couch and Hope Cholo, I don't really know a single fucking guy on this team. I have no clue. I don't know if they're good. I don't know if they're elite. I don't know if they're bad. I don't know if they're shitters. I don't know what they are. You have Bartlett. You have Young Couch. You have Peck, 87. Oh, Busy. Oh, Hope Cholo. Okay, good goalie. Fresh for days. Oh, although he is in the CHL. He has okay CHL stats. Okay CHL stats. And Johnny plays. When half your roster has me literally, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. I'm like looking around in confusing, confusion. Like, I, like I've just been hitting the fucking head from behind. I don't know where the fuck I'm at. When I'm reading a roster and that's how I feel, probably not a good thing. I know a lot of people in this game. I know players that suck. I know middle grade players. I know the top of the tier. I, I don't know a single guy other than two. I just don't. It's probably not the best. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm fucking wrong. I, I really do. Nothing would tickle my fucking pickle more than every team be even. Because at the end of the year, if we have that much fucking parity, then this league has gone great. And I can pretty much guarantee most people will be back if there's that much parity. If it's a dogfight and it's that interesting where everyone's in it to the last time, the last game, last series, well, goddamn. Then we've got somewhere. But I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, moving on. And this is where it gets tricky, by the way. Let me just say this. 12 to 10 could go anywhere. I could be completely off on these first and foremost. I'm, I'm not God here, so it's just my opinion. Uh, but I think 12 through 10 in no particular order. But in this case, it will be in a particular order. 12, Odd Guy. I like Odd. Odd's a great player. Uh, he got Odd Guy, Dalai Lama, Float, The Lime, 
Dr. Dangles, Siv C. Poe, Younger 97, and Abucho Donosaur. Now, this team could surprise people. This team might be better than I'm giving them credit for. There's a lot of I don't know on this team for me. I just, I'm being honest. It's a one man fucking show. What do you want me to do? I don't have five co hosts to save me here and be like, oh, this guy's good, or this guy does this, or he plays. I just don't. I, I'm looking at a draft sheet, I'm looking at my notes. It's just me. And I don't know some of these guys. And the few that I do know, I'm eh. On. That's the best I can give you. I'm eh. I don't know what to say. They're all right. They're not world beaters. They're not going to win you games. Just don't see it. I'm sorry. Again, prove me wrong. I just don't see it. Number 11. Hate to do it. Hate to do it. My boy Jay. And this also, asterisk. I'm calling for it. I feel like I should get two. I feel I'm going to get three. I think it's fair. It's 15 teams. Give me three, for fuck's sake. It's my show. I do what I want. I get three. This is number two. I'm using them early. Using them early here, folks. Asterisk on Jay's team. Jay's team could be one of the top teams just on the connection alone. Whoever makes the schedule, normally, it seems like there is no rhyme or reason at all how the schedule is made. I feel like normally I'm on teams where two out of three is always on the other team's host. We're always the away team. Um, if Jay gets host two out of three on the majority of nights, he'll be at the top of the league. I, I truly believe that. I mean, good luck. Uh, he's a good player. He's a good player. And the guys he got, the guys that he got aren't awful, awful. Jay has some shitty friends. Like It'll be the first to tell you. He plays with some shitty people. But the guys he brought in are better than his usual shitty friends. So these guys aren't terrible. And the few guys he got that are well-known, well, they're pretty good players. Jay's roster. Jay, Saner, Ezreal. Uh, you don't know. Donner there. Uh, Sniper, 0270. Spoonman Fork, Echo Cosmic 8. Blue Liner, X6. And C S E R E S N Y E S I. C S R E S N E S E. I don't know. I don't fucking know. That's one of Jay's friends, I guess. I, I just don't fucking know. West Coast team, though. So it all depends on the connection there. I'm going to put Jay at 11 because, on the flip side, if he doesn't get host, that's what will fuck him. His whole team will be playing on 120 ping, going against people playing on. Anywhere from 6 to probably 30. So that could be an absolute nightmare for Jay. I mean, that's just the facts of life. Uh, 10, Hollywood. Now, this team could also be a lot more surprising. And I don't want to use my asterisks here. I won't because I only have one left. But I have Hollywood at 10. Now, Hollywood's team is Hollywood, Dangles HD, Yakov. Uh, Derek GNR, Frosty Nightmare, Clancy, and Stoey Jopa. That's a, that's a solid group. Uh, damn near would say they would be a top four team if it was last year, the year before, the year prior. But again, I look at the talent in this league now. I don't know if that team has the talent to keep up with the big dogs. And there is five or six what I consider pretty big dogs in the league. This is this is your issue. I I just I don't know if they have it. I think they have a lot of really good players. I don't think they have many great players. And that is gonna bite them in the ass when they play teams that have great players. I don't know how they match up against a lot of these other teams, so that's how we're going there. Number nine. This is where it gets fucking interesting. I, I'm not joking, and I'm trying not to take the pussy way out. I'm really not. But legit, nine through probably three, in my opinion, could be rearranged however the fuck you want it. Maybe even nine through two. Uh, some would probably say nine through one. I, I, it's that close. I, I really think these teams are very close to each other. So let me get that out of the way. Just because I'm saying, oh, you're ninth or eighth, I'm literally saying now, you could be number one, even in my own mind. This was very tough for me. With the one year I've done power rankings before and I wrote it out, simple. It was like, to me, I was like, this is fucking easy. There was like two teams. I was like, oh, this team might be this. And 
I, and I was pretty much dead on in my predictions anyway. So it was easy. This was not easy. This was completely not easy. I, I, I'm telling you, for me, it wasn't. Maybe for others it is. For me, not so much. Power kill at number nine. Power kill, first pick overall, Rondon Volante, followed up with Anthrax. Raw B, 3-2, 3 Dugan, X-95, Death 2 a 11 3 Finney, and BC Renton. Solid team. I, I There's a couple guys I just don't fucking know. There's a couple guys I just don't fucking know. But I know Power Kill's a solid player, so I don't think that he would just bring in shitters. I don't think that those guys are going to suck. I, I just, I, I got a feeling that at the very least, they'll be mid-tier solid guys. They might not be superstars, but they'll be mid-tier guys that get along, work well in his system, and Rondon has so much versatility that... I, I do like this team. It's a crime that I put them at nine. And it's my rankings. It's my rankings, and I feel like it's a fucking crime that they're at nine. But thus is life. Number eight. It's fucking tough. God, this is... I'm looking at this now, and I'm like, how the fuck did I rank this? I, I, I did this earlier, and I'm literally looking at this going, I don't know if I agree with this. this is how tough it was. Uh, Nick the Greek. Nick the Greek at eight. We got Nick DeGreek at Nick DeGreek at eight. Surprise me. Barrett fifty cal. Epic. Drug monkey. Butcher son. Newfie Bruins. It's the offense. That's that's why. Offense sells tickets, right? Gets eyeballs on the product. Well, that's the offense. You want to watch a high scoring game? That's that's the team to watch. They're gonna be a lot of offense. Now watch them come out and trap. Watch them just to fucking shove it up my ass. They'll probably trap, but I really think that's going to be a high-scoring offense. I think even the good teams are going to have a little bit of trouble stopping them because they're just going to come in waves. Um, I really like that team. Um, but I think the reason why I do have them so low is I think they're back-end. Um, Epic's good. I just don't know if Epic at number one on the D-Depth chart is as great as you'd want. Possibly. I don't even know if I completely agree with that. I guess he's not the worst number one. He's really not. I, I like Epic. But if you he's your number two, then you're fucking money. You're money if he's your number two. You can get a number one with him, you're you're set. So hit them as the number one and then giving him, I guess, Butcher's son or Newfie Bruins. I'm like, eh, that, that's the one that makes me drop a bit. Seven. Croy Don Knight. Croy Don Knight with G.I. Joe Destro. Wingles, B. Teps, Sauce Walker, Donnie Wood, Duff McGriff, and Zombie Dangles. Now, Croydon's Knight's an interesting team. Croydon's a, got a very, very interesting team. Looking at this now, and even looking at it earlier, this was a team that I, I, white, I have white out on this page. I initially put them at number nine. And then... I waited it out and moved them all the way to seven. I like this team. G.I. Joe is so much better than people are going to think. And many people that haven't played with him or against him, when they line up and they see this guy come in a game at six foot seven, defensive defenseman, people are going to fucking laugh. I did. Last year, I'm, I'm a defenseman. I was like, look at this fucking guy. And he's on my side. Give me the puck. I'll carry it. And then this son of a bitch wrecked me. And I didn't skate right for five minutes. And I didn't want the puck anymore. I'm like, just give someone else the fucking puck. I, I don't want to carry it on his side anymore. I'm tired of getting hurt. I don't like it. I'm, I'm fucking 6'2", six 6'3", six grinder. I'm not used to this shit. I don't like it. And he didn't miss checks. I mean, I'm trying to LT. I'm seeing fucking like, you know, I forget. It may have been Donnie that game. I'm not sure. No disrespect if it was Donnie or not. It might have been Dom. Either or, good player, both good players. Just couldn't get around the guy. Fucking just smashing everything. I think that was the one regulation loss we had in the regular season last year. And he did that with, uh, I don't even remember. It's, I know disrespect again, but I don't even remember the fucking guy's name. The guy that played center for their team. Like the bad one. Not Anderson, the other one. The one that actually lost games. That guy. It's incredible. It's a great defenseman. So I really like the decor there. 
uh, with him. And I guess, I don't know if Wingles is playing D, but I'd assume plays D in AHL for LG. So, I mean, that's a great decor. That is a slept-on decor. Maybe the best in the league. Um, with the exception of one. I might sound like a homer, but we'll get to us later. Uh, they have Donnie Wood. I brought him up my team last year. Like Donnie a lot. Dynamic player. Um, I don't know if he's full time or not. If he is, they that's great. If he's part time, they still got a great player part time. So, either way, uh, I like Croydon's team a lot. Let's get on to number six. Number six is Cosmic and BTW. I would like my asterisks. My final, my third. Cosmic and BTW's team could be as good as the best team in the league. It's that simple. They have a goalie that has played goalie for a while. They have a goalie that won 131 and 18 in the CH. I know it's a CHL. I know he only went 12, 6, and 2 in the end. He's 17 and 31 in the A. It's not the best, I guess. I don't know the whole story with that either. I don't know if he played defense or forward. One of the, I have no clue. But I know he played goalie in the C. It's 131 and 18. Again, I know it's a C, but what, what comes with the C is usually shitty defensemen. Not the best elite players. You don't always play with the best talent in the C. Let's be real. So this guy had to put up with that as a goalie. And that's his record. I think they got one over on y'all. I, I think that's going to be a great player. Crispy, great player. Esports player. BTW, esports player. Cosmic, esports player. It's a trend here. It's a trend developing here. Now, I have no idea who Hall of Fame and Wes is. Now, unless they're just personal friends and are weak links to the team, which where they were drafted, I don't fucking think so. This team is pretty stacked, folks. It's pretty stacked. You got Cosmic, BTW, Crispy, Hall of Fame, Wes, number 3163, Yin 75, Pens 58, Fan Knife in Your Guts. I'm happy for my boy Knife. He's on a great team. He's on a great team. Good for him. Good for Cosmic. If Wes is Wesley Snipes, we're all fucked. Hand them the trophy, belt, whatever you want to call it now. Just give it to him. If it's not, we still might be fucked because they normally don't play with scrubs. That's a hell of a good team. That's my asterisk. I have them at six, and I have an asterisk there because I have them at six, and later I'm probably going to tell you they're one of my three favorites to get to the finals because they are. So go figure. You tell me. I don't know. Number five, Pale, my team. Now maybe I'm just showing biased. Maybe, maybe we belong in ninth. Maybe we belong in tenth. Maybe we belong in first. I don't know. It's, it's tough when you're judging your own team, but I, I like our team. We have Pale, we have Seji, we have K-Dog, we have Zombie, we have me, we have Brickwald, Barzell, and Headless Frangu. Now, Seji's a stud. Seji's a fucking stud. It's first and foremost, Seji's a stud. Pale, great player. K-Dog, again, Norris runner-up last year. Now, that, there is an asterisk on the Norris. Even though I won it last year, I, I will say there is an asterisk on the Norris. A lot of good defense in this league just simply didn't play last year. It's simply, we, we didn't have the drug. We didn't have the Wizzy. Uh, we didn't have Daly. We didn't have a lot of these guys. So, um, it, it's one of those things where take it with a grain of salt but he is a very good defenseman. Norris runner-up last year. Um, Zombie, in his own right, good player, solid player. You have me. Brick Wall seemed good. I really like our team. Uh, what I like on our team is that on a single night, when we want it to be, we can have on the ice, Pale, Seji, me, and K-Dog. That's four or five skaters on the ice that are what I would consider high-level players. For this league, that's, that's pretty good. And I think when you have that, you're going to win the majority of the games. And I, I do believe that we have that team. That's why I put us at five. Could be wrong. D-Mart. Number four. Really like D-Mart's team. 
really do. Dmart, B Crips, Cortezier, Wizzy War, Sober Enough, Swag, Novocaine, Tomahawk. Have to be honest, not very familiar with Novocaine. Heard good things. Not as familiar with Swag for whatever reason. I, I'm like familiar with the name. Doesn't ring a bell. Hasn't rung a bell for whatever reason. But I feel like he's decent and everyone's told me absolutely he is. Uh, a good team from top to fucking bottom. A top to bottom good team. Probably the best goalie in the game. You got Wizzy, one of the best, if not the best defenseman in the game. Cortez, a solid forward. Demart. One of, if not the best forward in the game. When you're literally going down the line going, well, they're goalie. It's maybe the best player in the game, best goalie in the game. They're D-man now. Maybe the best D-man in the game. The forward, maybe the best forward in the game. When you have all these boxes and you keep checking them and checking them and checking them, it's a sign of something. It's a sign of a special team. That's a special team right there. D-Mart's team's very good. That's number four. That team right there in my list is number four. Like, am I crazy? They're great. It's a great fucking team. Number four. Number three. Dom Silva, Rev Hellcat. I, I love this team. I fucking love this team. I really, really do. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm overhyping. Maybe I'm exaggerating. I don't know. But in my opinion, I love this team. Dom Silva, Rev Hellcat, Jelly, Sea-Doo, Swizzy, Rocco, Profits, Phoenix Rising. As I said earlier, only question mark in my mind is goalie. They're goalie. Goalie's a question mark a bit. Profits can have some eh, games. It's a fact. Played with a guy. Tons. Is what it is. But other than that, that team is very, very well built. Profits is not going to have a lot of work. That team is going to play a team game. Or a team that's going to like play defensive as a unit. But have Jelly who's out there scoring a bunch of goals. Swizzy can do the same. It's a good team. I really like them. If I had an asterisk left, I'd put it there, though, because I think I might just be a little bit in love with that team's roster. Like I just think the depth of that team, and maybe the depth and not the, it's not as top-heavy, maybe, as others, but the depth just has me, it has me hooked. It has me hooked. So that's why I have them there. But I could very well see them dropping. I could see them possibly dropping and a team like Cosmic jumping up and being there. A team like ours jumping up. A team like Croydon's jumping up. I mean, these teams, like I said, 9 through 3 or 9 through 2, in my opinion, is ju it's such a crapshoot. I'm just rolling the dice. Just making a list to make a list. It's, it's that close. It, it's so close. Number 2. Anderson, SBDR. I always say center is the most important position in the game. So much is dictated from the center's play, how the defense can play, how the wingers play. They dictate the slot defensively and offensively, which is such an important part of the game. They have three potential best centers in the game. They have three of those players. Seed up, Anderson, Young Buff. They also have SBDR, co captain, of course. Superstar, the goalie, the sleeper goalie that could be as good as B Crips or better. Gyneman, the clumsy ninja, Agent 007. There's your weaknesses. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Your weaknesses is there clumsy ninja and agent. But you're going to have games where you have Anderson, you're going to have Buff. And you have one of those guys probably playing forward. And you have C-Dub in the back. You know, it's just... You can't beat that. You really can't. That's, that's just a fucking such a good line. One, one question mark on wing. Of all the positions, probably right wing. It's an easy hurdle to cover. It's an easy hurdle to get over. It's not tough to do with only one player. If your weakest player is going to be a right wing, you're probably in a good spot. Probably in a good spot. As long as your D is top end, it is. Your center is top end, it is. And your other winger is top end, it will be. You're set. You're set. And that's what you have there. So that's number two, which leaves us with the number one team in my power rankings. 
it seems like they're the number one team in a lot of power rankings. A lot of people's opinions, Pale's power rankings. Seems like across the board, this is a team that has everyone's attention. No regretskis. No regretskis with Brick City, Notorious Figo, Ozzy, Link Runner, Megilla, and Legion. Again, again, regretskis, Figo, Ozzy. That's your offense. It's a fucking great offense. Brick City on defense. One of, if not the best defenseman in the game. Or in, in the league, sorry, in the league. Also, versatile. Can play forward. Play forward at a high level. Either or. Could chip in offensively from the DN if the offense is happening to have a bad game. Link Runner. One of the better goalies in the game. You're down to, they only have one question mark. One question mark. It's a defenseman. It's, it's a little scary. And Legion and Megillah. I've played with Megillah before at defense. Megillah is not the worst. Megillah is prone to making mistakes here or there, but Megillah is not the worst. I don't have as much experience with Legion. I think I've played with him a couple times. I don't. Th I think he's the same as Megillah. He's not terrible. He can make some mistakes. Everyone does, though. But that's their question mark. That's their question mark. So that's your teams. That's my power rankings. That's how I see it. Now, with, with the power rankings out of the way, I just want to touch on this one final thing before I go. I just want to predict. Because you have your power rankings going this season, but even when I'm looking at power rankings, I'm just looking as pure talent. I, I kind of look at it that way. When I'm doing power I'm like... Who's pure talent? Set aside chemistry and things of that nature. Let's just look at pure talent alone and make these power rankings. So when I did that, then I started looking at it, and I started looking at it from a different scope, thinking, who's built for a playoff run? Who do I expect to be in the finals? And at the end of the day, I came down with a few teams. One right off the bat, Cosmic. Cosmic and BTW, there's just something about that team. One of the reasons why is I really believe Hall of Fame and West are going to be somebody good. I don't know who. I don't know if they're a second tag, like I said. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, that I, I just have a feeling they're going to be a good player. There's something that jumped off the page with that team to me. And I just have a good feeling for them. They just really do. The next team is my own team. I really do. Because I believe defense wins championships. And I think you have probably, in my opinion, the best decor in the game. Again, maybe I'm biased. But you're going to be able to put out for four games in the playoffs. Should we make the playoffs? Myself and k Dog, And then you have Pale and Seji and Zombie up front. And again, I played with Brick Wall. He's not shit. He's not shit. He isn't your typical shit goalie. I'm just being honest. He's not. Is he elite? I don't know. The jury's still out. I haven't seen enough. But I've seen enough to know that he's not going to cost too many games. He's not going to be that guy where I'm like, oh my fucking God, I can't give up a shot. So already I know we have that. So I really believe that with the defense we have, with the forward firepower that we will have in a four-game series, I think that at that point, we don't have a hole. Whereas other teams might have that guy where it's like, eh, we won't. That's my theory. That's why I like us. And the third is Dom Silva and Rev Hellcat. And the same reason. Defense wins championships. You have Rev. You have Rev. You have Dom. You have Sidu. Now, I don't know how they're going to pair up this defense. I really don't. I'm guessing it's Rev's definitely going to be back there. I could see um, Sidu, obviously, and then Dom rotating. So you're going to have Swizzy and Rocco and Jelly. I don't know how it's going to work with center. I don't know if Rocco's a center. I, I, I Like I said, I, I've only heard things about him and heard nothing but good things. Uh, Swizzy's a left wing. And Jelly's a winger, too. I believe right wing. And both of them aren't exactly like the type of guy you'd want at center. It's not their strong suits. Say that. 
definitely better on the wing, giving them freedom to run and gun if need be. But you have the defense behind him to be able to do that. And defense wins titles. If their goaltending can hold up, if Profits can just stop the shots he's supposed to stop, I really see that team going deep. I just do. That's a team that's built for the playoffs. They might not kill everyone in the regular season. Our team might not either. Shit, Cosmic's team might not with their part-time shit. I don't know. But I just feel like they are built for the playoffs. And that's the three teams I see representing in some way, shape, or form the finals in this year's season. So we've gone over the power rankings. We've gone over the draft. I've given you my thoughts on the playoffs already before a single game has been played. And now we've reached the end of the show, folks. I appreciate everyone for listening, watching, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to try to do more of these. I think this went pretty well. I don't hate myself after I've just done this. I don't think that uh, it was that difficult. I'm not super bored. I not want to pull my hair out or anything like that. I would love to get a co-host or someone else that would like to do this with me. Um, no set times or anything like that. I want to do one early in the afternoon right now because I think a lot of people are out of work and just chilling at home. And I know a lot of people are always up at night and they get the podcasts that are at night. A lot of people got to work in the morning, so they miss them. So I figured try a little something different. Do something in the afternoon, in the morning for the other half of the league. It doesn't sleep till 3 p.m. or, you know, gets up early. So, yeah, definitely would like to do more of these. And uh, hopefully we'll do things more better. I, I'm probably going to get something downloaded, uh, maybe OBS, and um, could possibly see about just uploading a podcast if people didn't care about it not being live, if that's such a big deal. Um, just upload a podcast to Spotify or something. Make it very simple for everybody. Um, but we'll see. If everyone liked the show, wants it to continue, definitely look into doing more of these. But... With that said, I want to thank everyone one last time for listening. This was the debut edition of the BLK Show. I wish all the teams and owners luck this year. I really do. I hope that even the teams that I rated low or talked ill of, you're not too mad at me. And I really hope you do prove me wrong. As I said, parity is what's best for the league. It's what helped grows it. Um, media, I can't stress again. Keep it coming. You know, I... Even if you just want to do one show, even if you're like, I don't know if I'm going to continue this. I, like I said, I'm doing this and I didn't know if I'm going to continue it. I still don't. But if you do it, just do it. Just fucking stream on Twitch. Turn on hockey. Turn Twitch on and just rattle about with whatever your feelings are. I just proved it. You don't need a co-host. You don't need one. One guy can sit here and just bullshit and talk about their feelings towards the league and hopefully entertain. Hopefully, hopefully I did that. Hopefully I at least killed some people's times today while they're locked in and at least entertained a bit. With that said, thank you again. We will see you next week when the schedule is released on the ice. Let's wish all the teams the best of luck. And this has been the BLK Show, the first edition. Thank you again for watching, listening, 